Biceps von Frankenberg. Uh, and we're going to talk about the BMW. One, the question I think probably on everybody's mind is, is BMW is so closely associated with, with, with high performance, luxury, internal combustion engine vehicles. I mean, when you're thinking about luxury and performance, BMW is the first product that comes to mind. And, and I have to be thinking that all the loyal BMW owners and fans of the vehicle are thinking to themselves, an electric car from BMW, what are you guys thinking? Yeah, what, what we thought about is, first of all, we are really happy that we have these loyal customers all over the world, and we are also very proud about our combustion engine, diesel or petrol engines. But uh, since uh, the world is moving on, uh, and uh, we are actually the ones that are coming up with new ideas, innovation, uh, this is the reason why we uh, developed uh, BMW i and why we developed electric engines. Because one thing is for sure that people in the mega cities uh, are, are more and more, and the mega cities are growing and growing. And uh, the requirements concerning uh, global warming or carbon footprint uh, will be tougher in the future. And as a car manufacturer, we have to react and we have to have an answer for our customers so that they can still enjoy individual mobility in the future. And this is why we came up with actually a new brand like BMW R. Right, okay. So you're thinking that, I mean, looking around, you know, I mean, you come to the United States, man, it would seem that there is not the same level of concern about climate change and, and those kinds of issues. Is, is that the strong suit here, or is it the performance and the economics that an electric car represents over, I mean, uh, coming in here, a guy I was flying with, he showed me the charge for the, the, the gasoline to fill his car, yeah. $100, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously something you probably are used to in Europe, because yeah. your prices yeah. are or at least Much double what they are absolutely. here. Mm -hmm. um, so people are starting to recognize that. So is, does, does the does the environmental concern about global warming and climate change is that Trump or does the sale of performance of an electric car and the economic value of an electric car ownership and those issues is that the more important message to an American audience? Let's say? I would say it's both. Uh, it depends on on where you are. Just think about California or the West Coast, but also here, Boston or New York. Uh, people are asking for. Um, a performance car, so no sacrifice uh, concerning the things that they are used to, to have, but they want to have a performance car, but they also want to show uh, to the outside that uh, they are taking care about the environment. The other point is that a couple of uh, cities already decided um, to, in the future, maybe ban uh, combustion engines or maybe prefer plug-in hybrids. And this is something what we as an, as, an um, as BMW, we have to come up with an answer with. And we are not waiting. And the thing is that we are moving forward and we are going to introduce vehicles, not only the, the i brand, we are also going to introduce plug-in hybrids uh, uh, with, uh, with the combination of a BMW highly efficient motor for BMW Mini and, uh, and even Rolls Royce. So we, with the BMW i, we are preparing the one or the other technology and uh, this was actually also a task we got from the board when we started Project I to develop new processes, new technologies that can benefit to reach the, for instance, CO2 emission targets for the other brands as well. Right. Coming in here, and this sort of ties into that, coming in here yesterday, the, the traffic was absolutely crazy. Uh, we, you know, we're driving in a wonderful, wonderful luxury automobile and we're moving slower than the bicyclists we're running the city bikes around us. They're blocks ahead of us. Um, so, so in some respects, in these growing mega cities, the, the cars, the automobiles, seem to be coming increasingly kind of an anachronism. I mean, they they have a place, but it, but do they fit into? I mean, again, downtown Manhattan on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon, an absolute zoo, just traffic jam, gridlock. I would expect, I've seen photographs of other cities, uh, Lagos and Nigeria, where it's even worse, you know, and in Beijing with their five, with five or six day long traffic jam. It, does the, the I brand, and of course you guys are also strong in, in uh, the two wheel motorcycle market, 
does that offer you see an opportunity to maybe merge that technology that you're using for the I3 into even more city focused kinds of vehicles that are you know maybe along, along the lines of a, of a you know narrow two place car like the, the French Lumina uh, out of out of uh, out of France or you know Audi developed kind of a small type city car. This car is definitely a four passenger sort of uh, almost family car. Um, is there is there a place for that sort of marriage between this car and, and a BMW motorcycle? Is there some place that that brand can play a role? This is always an idea, but um, I would say um, if you do a marriage, then it's pretty much a compromise. And compromises are actually not what we appreciate. We need clear decisions. And if you have a motorcycle, a two-wheeler, you have the benefit of a two-wheeler. Right. Because you can drive around the traffic jam and you reach your target much quicker. So this would be an option. But if you have a car that is just slightly smaller, you're again sitting in a traffic jam. Right. The thing what our customers uh, ask us, first of all, they know that they will sit in a traffic jam, but they like to have individual mobility. And uh, they ask us what I said earlier, they wanted to be able to work in the car, even if they sit in a traffic jam. They just want to have a seamless connection for the iPad, laptop or PDA. Right. And they wanted to have a sofa, as I said, maybe this is uh, very much uh, overdone, but it's, it's a kind of seat bench, so they want to move to the other side and sit, relax and work. Uh, and then maybe if the traffic jam clears up so they can continue driving. And the other point is that they wanted to have a kind of um, mobile infrastructure um, software in the car. And that's what we are going to introduce with BMW i. We call it intermodal routing. Right. So if you see already in your real-time traffic navigation system that there is a traffic jam, then you can just hit Find me another way. Or find me and find me another way by using the subway or maybe the train or the airplane. And yeah. these are the things um, what our customers actually ask for. And this is what we are going to launch with the i3. Okay, so I, I decide that I need to go um, from uh, my home over New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, to the uh, JFK to catch a flight, yeah. and I get in the car, or maybe from my iPhone, I ask, I ask the car, yeah. the iPhone, yeah. Yeah. how's can, the best way to get exactly, there? Yeah. And it may say, son, park in New Jersey, Jersey. Exactly. and take the take train. train. <laughs> take the train, and you can do that right from your breakfast table, right. and, or send it in the car, right. and then it's in the car, or you do it in the car, if you already it's, see that there's a traffic jam coming, right. it finds your parking spot. So, did, do you see this sort of merging with, uh, with the, like the Oyster system in London, where you've got sort of that kind of intermodal capability? You can ride a bus, you can ride the subway, you can ride the train just with that that one pass embedded into your exactly. smart so, app on your phone. Exactly. So this is where there, there are lots of cities. They have already uh, their schedule uh, of the public transportation uh, on the web. Right some not but the ones that are able to to put that on the web we have a link to their schedule and you will get precisely the, the departure time and the arrival time and uh, if there is a parking garage that shows you okay there's the next empty spot it will guide you to the empty spot well this is this is obviously applicable just beyond the the, the outer car i mean you, you would obviously want this in, a, in an m or in every car in every car Absolutely. right so but we introduced that with the BMW i and this was one of the tasks that is really independent of the sub brand right. but we got the task to come up with mobility solutions. Right. Let me ask you this on sort of a technical thing then. Um, is, is that sort of is, is it an internal Wi-Fi that's doing that? Is it a Bluetooth that's doing that? And is the connectivity is there a separate if you will, IP address for the car, and they use what a cellular backbone, or how does if that works around the city here? But what if I drive outside the city where there's no yeah. signal? No, the uh, i3 will be equipped uh, with a cellular with a SIM card. Okay. Um, every car has it as standard. It does have only BMW. This is only for BMW yeah. available. So no other car. No, no other car is doing this. It. Has, it, is its own telephone. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. It has its own IP address, but yeah. it, 
all the all the gadgets you carry with you, you uh, can easily connect with Bluetooth as well. Right. So. Okay. So if I've got my phone there, yeah. I can yeah. just you don't have to plug it in and no wiring. It'll sync up. up. Although I'm, a, I'm loath to use that term in this company, but. <laughs> You got, currently the iBrand is focused on essentially two types of propulsion systems or, or power sources, if you will. One is battery. Yes. The other is what I call an electric hybrid or a, or a plug-in, where you've got a mating of a smaller electric battery pack to a internal combustion engine. Um, is there a role? You guys did, you know, a number of years ago, a decade or so ago, you did a lot of work with a hydrogen-powered BMW vehicle using liquid hydrogen. Is there a role for hydrogen in that future? And would it be fuel cell or would it again sort of be the liquid internal combustion engine? What are your sort of thoughts on, on fuel cells? So we, uh, within BMW R&D, we are working on, on all different power trains. So we, we are working on still making the, the gas engine or the diesel engine much more efficient, combining it with a small electric uh, engine like the hybrids we have. Uh, Plug-in hybrid is, is the other option. Purely electric is what we are doing with BMW i. And of course, we are still continuing working on hydrogen. Fuel cell uh, as well uh, on the storage of the hydrogen. So this, these are things that we have not stopped working on. We continuously develop uh, hydrogen because we need to be prepared uh, for the future. And um, if maybe the, the, the gas station, uh, the, not the gas station, the, 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 the um, hydrogen uh, stations will maybe come in the future, magically, magically <laughs> appear, then we are ready with, uh, with, uh, with the powertrain. Right, okay. You talked, the only thing I found intriguing is, is that much of this car is, is manufactured using renewable resources. And we, and we spoke about, about the, uh, uh, you know, Governor Inslee spoke about the, the Moses Lake and, and the carbon uh, materials that are created there um, being done with uh, you know, river or hydroelectric power from the, from the Columbia and so on. Um, also, there was a reference to using wind power. Yeah. And I assume, and that's probably for the facility in Leipzig. Exactly. I, I would imagine, and I don't, I don't see you having big wind uh, turbines outside of the, the, the factory. Down, generally, they're located on farm, or increasingly, they're located in North Sea or Baltic. Uh, right off. So I'm, I'm guessing that not the case in with uh, BMW I. So we have the wind turbines sitting on our property okay. in in Leipzig in our production plant, okay. and each delivers 2.5 megawatts. Okay. Four of them are there and okay. they yeah, are running now and they are supplying you can see it from the, the complete production right facilities there. with uh, wind power. Okay, so when the wind isn't blowing, production stops or you... We have of course a backup system right, from right, the grid, but the right. good thing is Leipzig is the windy city of Germany. Oh, Leipzig, really? you will see thousands of wind turbines there and Leipzig probably has about 280 days of really strong wind, so we are quite confident that uh, we can really have a clean production inside with wind. You have to see that. You have to see that. So, so if you're going to, obviously then there are suppliers up the supply chain. Are you sort of encouraging those suppliers then to also look at sourcing their power from renewables? Absolutely. So, so at what, if you were going to put a percentage and say the BMW i3 is a X percent, well, I've got a better start for you since you're not worried about putting them in a renewably produced yeah. automobile. Yeah. What um, sort of would that number be you assign at this yeah. point? I can, I can give you an example so because we calculated from the raw material to the component to the sub assembly to the production product upcycling, recycling, and the use of the vehicle, we, we calculated the carbon footprint and we compared the i3 with a um, 118 diesel, a very efficient one series BMW, which was green car of the year, of the year. Yeah, okay. 2008. And uh, our target was uh, if you charge your car with green 
electric power to cut the carbon footprint in half. And this target we achieved. So half of the carbon footprint um, uh, you achieve with the I3 compared to 118 diesel. Okay, that's amazing. How good can we get? I mean, at what point do we, does this car become once you get started, renewably, sustainably. You know, this is pretty much a target, of course, so because this is the beginning, this is the start. So we started with with uh, lithium-ion batteries uh, a couple of years ago, and I'm sure they they will have a bright future. Carbon fiber, of course, as well, because we are just at the beginning of using carbon fiber in mass production, and uh, I'm pretty much convinced that uh, our customers will ask in the future for an even more sustainable car. And there's no question about that. And our colleagues are working on that uh, right now. Now you launch in November in Germany. Are there any programs that, of course, Germany has had, had a wonderful track record for encouraging the common people to take and, and take up solar and you know and wind uh, wind farm collectives and things of that nature. Are as part of your effort there? Are you? Also going to arrange uh, or it's provide additional incentives and entire explain to people how they can take advantage of using I'm sure solar, for example, to charge it off. Yeah. This is part of BMW. Uh, I 360 electric approach. Maybe you have heard about that. This is something what we are going to offer you as a customer. If you enter a showroom or on the internet, we are going to offer you a solution that fits perfectly to your needs. Even a carport comes with a solar roof on it uh, to charge your car where it makes sense. Uh, we are offering where it is possible green power especially in Europe, uh, so there are, there are, there are lots of uh, energy suppliers that are uh, supplying green power. So this is part of our full 360 electric package, okay. including the installation of wall box everything. All right, that's great. I've got a lot of other questions, but you've got other interviews you've got to do, and I so much appreciate you guys doing it. So Thank you. Thank you, Louis Grant and Sips von Hockenberg. Appreciate your time so much.